Hey, what's up? Yeah, I got I got four of them, so it'll be fun. Cool. Hey, there he is. Hey, buddy. Hey, Sorry about that. Oh, you know. Hello, gentlemen. How are we all doing? Wow, wow. Doing good? That how went. How's, how's the bar doing? going? Fantastic, Stat, man. Good? Good? Yeah, man. It's going really, really good. Good, 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 good. Good. Freak show. Uh, you have a new album, so shall it be? Um, on the owner records. Um Tell me a little bit about the recording process of, uh, you know, the CD. Uh, Ronnie, why don't you take it first? Okay. Well, what I did, Brian, is uh, I, uh, I I went to a local buddy of mine who uh, actually was playing with me in Miss Crazy. And he's got a studio, a home studio. And I went and cut some rhythm tracks with him all, all that uh, with the, with the right arrangement and everything that I worked on and, and I played to a click track and then I sent those over to Stet and then Stet started doing his drum tracks and, uh, and then, yeah. So Stet. Yeah. So, uh, Ronnie sent me these beautiful, uh, rhythm tracks. Um, it was just guitar and click track and, uh, the grooves were amazing and he sent them. Um, I was in about the middle of finishing the metal church record. The metal church record took months. We uh, probably four or five months because we were writing and recording drums at the same time. So while I was doing the metal church record, I was listening to the freak show rough tracks and right. getting it one with them and thinking about them. And, you know, the more frustrated I get doing this trash stuff of metal church, the more I was looking forward to grooving, you know, <laughs> on the Ronnie stuff. And um, so the second I was done with metal church, I took like a day or two off and I, um, I was so familiar with the tracks that I, I banged out uh, this stuff and, you know, a couple of few takes each, cause I pretty much knew what I wanted to do. And uh, it was very natural. There's no punches. It's all old school. Like we used to do drums on, on tape and um, just a beautiful, it was, it was really enjoyable. It was a real enjoyable and I, I didn't have uh, vocals yet. So I was, you know, kind of just assuming where the vocals were going to be and stuff. And um, never did I think the vocals were going to be so beautiful as they ended up though, you know, like stuff like right. you shine, those layers of harmony is just, Oh my gosh. The first time I heard that, I was like, this is awesome. Wow. wow. So <laughs> That's pretty cool. Hey, Carlos, what yeah. uh, what song was your favorite uh, on this album? Uh, probably "You Shine." They're uh -huh. they're all good songs. Right. You know, for me, the recording process was different too. I I had the pleasure of knowing Stet and Greg through the years, but I'd never met Ronnie, and he contacted right. me through social media through my wife, right. and he asked if I would be interested in helping them finish this record, and I liked the material, so I said, "Yeah." You know, it was a no-brainer, and um, just did it at home and sent them the files. Wow! But uh, probably, uh, probably you shine the one we did the video for, and right, uh, they're all good though. Oh, cool, cool. Ronnie, what was your favorite? Um, you know, I I I kind of like uh, the the song MSM. Uh, -huh. uh, I think the guitar solo on there's it's like quick and ripping, but then it continues on the outro. I really like that. Right. Um, there's, you know, I, I kind of like the instrumental, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> that just, it's just fun because what the band gets to do, why Carlos gets to show the world that he's like one of the greatest guitar players on the planet, you know? Right, yeah. And that, and that, that's a, that's a total statement. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that song is a major statement. Wow. How about well, you? Thanks I'll later for how much you wanted, okay? <laughs> what was your favorite set? Uh, you, you shine is absolutely. Uh, my, I, I just love the layered harmonies. I love the wide open, sexy groove, especially from where where I just came from, man. Because I was thrashing it with Metal Church for like all the last year and a half, and I love that. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong, but I also love a huge open groove. That big the big air in between as well. You know, right. and it's you know. That, that, that song really moves me. I think it's quite quite good. Carlos, what uh, guitar yes. player uh, at this time right now in music uh, would be your favorite player? My favorite rock guitar player? Oh, God, there's a lot. You know, I like all the, the people from the 80s, basically, you know, like, uh, you know, and even beyond like uh, Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, Michael Schenker. Uh, Richie Blackmore. I like all those guys. It's hard to pinpoint one person, but 
I'm influenced by, you know, classical guitar players as well. And uh, I, I pl play flamenco and classical and stuff like that. So I try to incorporate that into rock as much as I can, which it, I was able to do a lot of weird scales on this record, uh, you know, Egyptian scales and Spanish scales and stuff. But um, I, I don't know, probably my favorite probably had to be Jimi Hendrix, but he's not current. How about, so. uh, how about Ronnie? What, what's your favorite singer? Uh, dude. <laughs> I mean, God, dude, there's such a long list of to just to, to narrow it down to a guy. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm just gonna scrap all my hard rock influences that are obvious, and I'm gonna go with Elvis Presley because I can listen to that guy any time of the day, and I'm really into his '70s stuff lately. I, I just <laughs> I've been totally like YouTubing his live '70s mm -hmm. concerts and realizing how insane his drummer and his band was and awesome. uh yeah i'm on an elvis kick right now actually <laughs> how about you Steph? You what's, your, what's your favorite drummer oh well you know i again i started with uh buddy rich changed my life you know right. uh when i when, when i saw buddy when i was like seven i sat through two shows and then you know your combine of peace came along i I wore out made in Japan trying to figure out what the hell Ian Pace was doing. You know, Neil oh. Peart blew my mind. I love Keith Moon. I like the busier guys, you know. Right. I mean, I appreciate I appreciate sim simple playing, of course, but I was drawn to the more the the more intricate stuff myself, you know. Right. And I was fair, fairly capable, so I, I kind of like followed those type of guys, you know. And now nowadays I have uh I did a tour with uh, Doro a few years back, and they had this young drummer named Jordan Canada. This kid's uh -huh. sick. Jordan's yeah. just amazing, and he's like he's became my my dear friend. But uh, for for young drummers, that kid's got it. There, there, and anybody better than that little son of a gun, man. It's really badass. Now, if you guys go out on tour and stuff, will you be playing like uh, um, his crazy songs, Quiet Riot, Wasp, other bands, Ronnie? Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if it fits into the show, yeah, why not? You know. Yeah. But you that you think so? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I. Uh, yes, I. We. I was talking to Ronnie about that a little bit. I, people don't really know that much, but I can. I sing. You know, I can sing. I can uh, actually sing "Quiet Riot" and "Wasp" pretty damn good. You know, me and Ronnie. And were you, talking and, about and you will. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, we, we were talking about potential stuff, you know, you know, what would might make sense, you know, your, your metal help, your uh, love machine or be somebody, you know, uh, right. and Ronnie's got some free show stuff. Of course, if we play a, a, anything resembling a headline show, we're going to have to do more than our album because we'll have to fill at least an hour or 75, you know, right. but I, I think we're going to look for again, we I use the word cherry pick so much, but we're going to look for the, the right shows, the bills to get on multi bills, you know, um, right. And we're, we're friends with so many people that once we once it starts, we'll be able to jump on cool bills. And, and uh, I think it's going to be great. You know, no one wants to, like, go on a long tour necessarily, but we're all interested in doing some shows. So I'm not saying I wouldn't do a tour if it was correct. But, you know, it's just the universe guides you. The universe is your rudder. You, you, you don't always know what's what's next. So we're just patiently waiting for and things are materializing right now. Things are materializing. Yeah, there, there, there was talk of offers yesterday and I was pleasantly surprised of, you know, the, the numbers that were coming in. It's, you know, we're going to do OK out here when, when we finally do this. It's going to be fantastic. And and we all get along so good. We're untainted. We all we all we found each other. But none of us are interested in working with assholes for any money. None of us. We won't. I won't do it. You know, I, I know everyone here feels the same way. So we're just yeah. uh, we, waiting for our good opportunities to come. Ronnie, if you get yeah, when you go out there, it's all about having fun. If you can't have fun, oh, yeah. you know, it's not really worth it. Definitely. You know, sure, the money might be good, but it, you're miserable out there when everything's going bad, you know. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Uh, Ronnie, if you get to go out, like, supporting a, you know, a, a band, what band would that be? Well, I, I don't know if I have the choice, but if I did have a choice, like, you know, that would be a great thing uh, in a perfect world. Um. I, I'd love to go out like Def Leppard, man. I think that'd be so awesome. Uh, that's like a dream kind of gig. But, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, really cool, just hard rock, you know, just somebody, you know, and it would be cool if it was people we knew, too. That'd be great. Uh -huh. How yeah. about you, Carlos? 
Yep. Would you like to go out with uh, any particular band? Uh, I would think it'd be awesome if we can get on a multi-band bill with a couple of known names and we could be the support, you know, on a three, four band bill. That'd be awesome. But I totally agree. Scorpions or like, you know, anybody like of that stature would be awesome to to be the headliner. And then we could be like the opener of the. I know. You, know, you, you toured with the Scorpions the with Rat. I remember that. And Quiet Riot before, too. Well, how about That's you, Rat? Well, I, I'm a big, uh, I really like multi-band bills, you know, and there's so many of those. A lot of a lot of the '80s stuff is really strong. You got the you got the Vince Neil, uh, Quiet Riot, Rat, you know, gang people. All the bands are ganging up to do like three, four band bills. I love to be on either bills like that or a package little run. But you know, that that's the the way the way for us to go is to be on multi band bills. A smart thing isn't to go and see how many people we can't draw. I mean, I know that if we play if we play to Vamp, we're gonna do great. If we play to Whiskey, we're gonna do great. But right. you know. I I'd feel better on a multi-band bill, letting you know, being part of the drop, <laughs> yeah. but but having a headliner that's really handling it, you know. Yeah. Wow. Ronnie, do you watch anything on TV at all? Uh, you know, I've been doing, I've been binge watching shows. I I just watched The Gentleman. Uh huh. Um, and I'm glad I got that because a friend recommended it. Uh, and then I was watching Warrior before that. It's like the early early uh, stories of uh, Chinatown and right. you know and it's got some awesome fighting in it um, but you know y yeah I just kind of you know I try to just you know I, my wife and I we like to watch a lot of the Gordon Ramsay shows right yeah and he's got like five of them right so right yeah we watch all that pretty much you know right how about you Carlos you watch any TV uh, yeah, I do. I like a lot of 60s and 70s shows, and I like to watch some of the cooking shows and the car building shows and, um, you know, auto racing, stuff like that. Formula I mean, One. Uh -huh. nice. Yeah, I, I I just found out about Yellowstone. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm a little behind. Oh, dude. I, I, oh, my God. Beth Dutton's the coolest character. Her and Rip, man. Dude, the show is badass. addicting. Oh, she's a badass. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I... I when I'm uh, working around the, the the bar or the studio, I have mindless. I put on me TV and you know the rifleman and all that that shit's on. I like and that I got stuff, like, yeah. yeah, and I got a million TVs in my bar, you know. So like uh -huh. even in my game in my game room, I got you know I got the golden tee and I got the, the bowling game, I got the Iron Maiden <laughs> pinball game, and I got TV so we can watch TV while we're doing that other shit too, you know. It's, right. I just got done. I just got done playing a bowl, bowling over there, and I'm like, oh my god! I ran over and I got all ready and just you know like I didn't forget, but I was like, shit, what am right. I doing? Uh, but yeah, um, look, we got, I got lots of TVs here at the bar, so I, I, I do you show a lot of '80s videos. Do you show any '80s videos on your TVs and stuff? You should. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we'll actually uh, watch. You know, we'll. The other night we pulled up uh, um, the our first good metal church show was here in Fort Myers at a place called the Ranch. It's a nice concert hall, and we just there was the first night that we clicked and we were just awesome. I was like, yeah. Well, they had they they shot it, and we um, and everybody at my bar was there, you know. So the other night we were all packed, and for some reason we pulled it up, and we all watched the show, and they're all seeing themselves in the audience. And shit. it was like a great time. So we do watch some some stuff now and then. I'll pull some of my MTV videos out when people, are, you know, because yeah. sometimes people are like, I'm sorry, but I don't know who the hell you are, and I'm like, I don't blame you. How it's you know this, I don't know why you should, but here it is, and I'll show my videos, and they'll be like, oh man, that's cool, you know. Oh, cool. This is uh, yes. Carlos, what is the most important thing that changed your life? The most wow. important thing that changed my life was getting a record deal with Quiet Riot. Uh -huh. You know, getting a record deal, I, that changed my life for sure. It was never the same after that. How about you, Ronnie? Um, I'll probably say, uh, you know, changing my life well let me see i mean the most important one. thing i'm probably saying uh getting married to my wife uh-huh you know because i was already a rocker doing stuff and i work you know i didn't choose to like be a plumber <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i chose to play rock and play guitar and write songs and so getting here to where i'm at with these dudes i worked my ass off to get here right mm -hmm. so but uh, I, I'd trade nothing in this world for, for the family that I have. 
How about you, Stat? Well, it's a two-parter. Like, career-wise, the, the MTV changed my life. You know what I mean? I went, you know, from obscure and not, nothing to some, some people knowing. You know what I mean? And right. then uh, in life, my wife Heidi changed my life because she saved my life. Right. Um, six years ago, I was sick with cancer. I thought I had a cold. I was going to go home and take some NyQuil and sleep it off. Right. Had I done that, I would have bled out and died. She has insisted it was more wrong, and she forced me to go to the hospital. And then when I went to the hospital, she ensured that I got proper help. And, and her insistence is what forced them to just barely f- figure out what was wrong with me in time to save my life. So um, I guess I guess meeting awesome. her cha- was a, a life-changing moment, you know? Right, yeah. That's nice. great. Cool, cool. Carlos, what album did you listen to the most when you were in high school? Uh, Kiss, the first record. That came yeah. out in the early 70s. I was totally into Kiss. and uh, when I, That was when I was in high school. Like 10th grade, I think it was. 11th grade. How about you, Ronnie? Same for me, man. I mean... You know, I was, I was starting to get into like, you know, Ozzy and Def Leppard and stuff. But, uh, you know, and then I already had the Van Halen going from my dad. But, uh, yeah, Kiss, man. Kiss changed my whole life because I started realizing their formula with songwriting, you know. Right. And then the, and then the vocals, you know, that they had were so great. You know, between Paul and Gene, I was just like, man, there's nothing better than this, you know. Right. Even through the, some of the dark times, man, I was right there. It's great. Right. Cool, cool. How about you, Stat? Uh, you know, I was, a, 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 I think, Rush and Deep Purple kind of let, like really s- grabbed the hold of me, you know. Neil Peart's creativity just sent my creativity to a new level. You know, he had so many different, he just had such a completely different approach to drumming. And it was so melodic. And, uh, you know, I, I, I must have stared at that 2112 album cover a thousand hours. You know what right. I mean? Just staring at it, you know. Yeah, cool. Cool. I love I like Kiss. I always lo- I love Kiss. I still love Kiss, but I just I, I was uh I was always just a little more into the music end, you know, because I, I grew up I grew up in Boston and from right. when, since I was a little little kid I'd hear about Berkeley. All my you know the musician people I'd hang around with were Berkeley people and that's that's some serious uh, pedigree, you know what I'm saying? Right. Oh yeah. So um yeah, but so I lean towards a more complicated, a little more progressive type of thing, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, cool. Carlos, did you collect anything when you were a kid? Collect anything? Uh, not really when I was a kid. Probably more collect stuff now. I like um, uh, guitars. I try to collect those. Um, uh, slot cars. I'm into slot car racing. Mm-hmm. I have a couple of tracks and uh, all kinds of like, uh, you know, cocks, like cucarachas and stuff like that. They're worth like 400 bucks now, 500 bucks. Wow. You used uh-huh. to be able to get them for like $25 back in the day. Cool. Uh, I got a collection of those, probably like 40, 50 slot cars uh-huh. cool. and How models. About- I built models. I got a collection of, in my garage, I have a whole shelf of, with glass doors with models behind there. And nice. Uh, what else? That's, that's really about it. Cool, cool. How about you, Ronnie? Yeah, I like to, you know, I, I'm, I'm into collecting, uh, you know, guitars like Carlos. That's nice. Uh-huh. But lightsabers like this. Yeah. <laughs> I like lightsabers. You can cut through a guitar with one of those, couldn't you? <laughs> you know, this is the kind well, of stuff that's well, pretty cool. Yeah. You're into stars. You're, you're into Star Wars stuff? Or is that, that's what that would be? Yeah. yeah. I got a line on a guy who, uh, who uh, gets them from the dude who actually makes them for the movies. So they're, they're basically the movie props, like right mm-hmm. out of the films. Nice. How about you, Stat? I uh, I have a lot of drum sets. Uh, <laughs> I, I could pan around the room, but I got one set up behind me. I got one up there set up for recording. I got three or four drum sets on that shelf. There's a few behind me, and there's some over there. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a lot of drum sets, and 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 I pre- I collect vehicles. Apparently, I got uh, I got um. A couple RVs, a truck, van, trailers. Yeah, I'm just, I, I got stuff, man, you know. And I don't sell things, you know. It's, I, uh-huh. it's awful. I threaten yeah. to, but I never really do, you know. I'm, I'm so, uh, yeah, I, I'd say drum sets would be the thing. I have a, I'm a DW and Dorsey because I think they're the greatest drums in the world. I've been with them since the mid 90s. 
And uh, they treat me great. I treat them great. But I have multiple. I have uh, all sorts of different drum sets, you know. Cool, cool. The only thing I, about, I like about being a drummer is all the room that the drums take up to store. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ, like, it's so much easier to store. you got to have a well, warehouse. <laughs> I, I do. Yeah. Well, my bar, it all started. I mean, I'm sitting my... The bar end of my, I mean, the stage end of my bar is a big warehouse and there was a pub like attached to the front of it and they were separate buildings. I've been, I've had the warehouse for like 13 years now and I just bought the bar in the front two years ago. So now they're attached and it's just one big thing. Um, but, but I've had, I've had piles and piles of drums here. When I got um, divorced, I got divorced from my first wife. I was like, oh crap, I had all this stuff, you know, I, you know, Corvette and, you know, all sorts of junk. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta hide this. She was right. mad at me. You know, yeah. so I, I, I hit all my shit in this warehouse. And then uh, eventually I started going, man, I could do some stuff here. And, and eventually I bought the bar and now I have a, a, a great little uh, entertainment venue, you know. So the yeah. pub, the pub part is like cheers. It's never it's always going. And I do events, you know, once or twice a week, you know, in the in the in the stage. Cool. 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 And cool. Ron, Ronnie, what do I collect? Uh, you collect guitar picks. There you go. Our picks, <laughs> yeah, and you know seven, what? That that is total eight thousand. Yeah, and that's total wow. brain waves because I was going to ask you that question, and I was just thinking about it, and I you went and blurted it out. Yeah, yeah, because you know you sent me some just recently, so you know that helps my collection. That probably pushes it up to eight thousand. You know, wow. <laughs> so Carlos, uh, what band would you like to see that you never got to see? What band would I like to see? Um, probably Led Zeppelin, but you know, obviously, well, yeah. with uh, you know Jason Bottom on drums, I guess would be great. But to see the original band would have been awesome. I never saw them. How about you, Ronnie? <clears throat> oh man, uh, I'd probably say I, I wouldn't mind seeing the the original Van Halen back in the day, right? Because. Uh, Every time they came to the Bay Area, it was sold out in like like a like a day, right. and and you couldn't you couldn't get tickets, you know, and it sucked so bad, man, because I just hear about it all the time, and then I finally got to see them, uh, you know, I I watched the the US Festival thing on Showtime and all that, right, okay. but that was the closest I ever got to seeing that Van Halen, but I got to see him finally with Sammy Hagar a bunch of times. Cool, cool. How about you, Stat? Well, either the Who or Queen. Right. Yeah. Wow. You know, because I, I I missed that. You know, um, I just I was always fascinated with the, with the Who. Just the, the Moon just fascinated me. You know what I mean? It was just such right. a. I thought I thought he. I mean, I know he's not every man. Every. I I know all drummers don't appreciate him, but I do. I very right. much do. He did. He he was so innovative. Um, and you know, Queen was Queen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, with Freddie Mercury and all, you know, yeah, I would have, I would have, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, the, I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen video with Adam Lambert and it, it was looked pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to see Queen with Paul Rogers. That was, I seen the video, it was awesome. Right. That's right. Live show. That's right. Yeah. I forgot Paul about Rogers. that. Great. Yeah. He's That's a great. trip. He's kind of good. Wow. I, I don't I even see how he would. How could he sing those tunes? That, that's he tricky. did. He did. It's great too. Uh, you could probably look it up. I've seen. I've seen the concert. They had it on on TV before years ago. Wow! I got to check that out. It was about four or five years ago, maybe. I don't, I, I don't remember exactly, but it was a while ago. I guess I got lucky because, like, uh, the magazine I was working for at the time sent me on assignment to photograph Queen at Madison Square Garden. So, like, uh, I got right. lucky. I got lucky. You know, was that with Paul Rogers? Oh no, that was with Freddie. Oh, with Freddie, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. That would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I photographed that show. It was great. You know, they were yeah, definitely you, a unique band. Cool, cool. You've done a lot, uh, Brian. Like, you know, some yeah. classic kiss stuff and Metallica. That's yep. 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 I'm gonna name a, a couple things one at a time and you tell me your thoughts about it. Uh let's start with you first, Carlos. Uh record label. Uh, record labels are can be a pain in the ass, but uh, some of them are really good and uh, work with you, but some of them don't. It, you know, uh, I think they're almost, in a way, kind of the thing in the past with the internet now, but I don't think they're going to go away completely, but they'll be there. Right. How about you, uh, Ronnie? 
Yeah, you know, it's really more about live shows and just having a product and getting it out there and, and just, you know, playing and doing stuff. And there's a lot of alternate things, but yeah, record companies are pretty much close, you know, the closest thing to the devil, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw an interview or read or something. I interviewed with Gene Simmons lately. He said that you can't make money in the record business anymore selling records. <laughs> How about you, Stat? Yeah, I see uh, the the record label thing. I find frustrating. Um, I I know it's just by the time you sift through the record label, there there's no more meat left on the bone for the artist. There isn't. Right. I, I mean, it's necessary so you can chart and things like that. But um, for mm -hmm. for me, it's all about the live show and selling the stuff live. We unload. We we make money, great money. Um, we sell our CDs and vinyl at live shows, and we sell them at a, at a pretty a little higher price because we're going to sign them later and stuff. Right. But uh, yeah, the record label thing. I you know, I'm 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 I got to stay neutral on it. I'm I'm not. I'm, I'm I'm they can go fuck themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, what do you think about God? Uh, God is the almighty God, the creator of everything. Without him, we wouldn't be here. I thank God every day. I count my blessings every day. You know, I really do. How about you, Ronnie? Oh, absolutely. 100%, man. I love I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And without him in my life, man, I'd, I'd probably be just a, a loser. Not that I'm not a part one now. I'm, But, you know, <laughs> I like to... Uh, I like to give thanks, man, where it's, where it's yeah. needed. Thank you. Everybody needs a little religion in their life. They really do. Right, right. How about you, Stet? Yeah, well, it's funny. When I, when I went into the hospital with cancer, I was, of the, I was mad. You know, I, right. I was like, a, a bunch of my friends just got taken right around that time. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm all set for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm checked out. But then when I'm laying in the hospital dying, funny you get religious again you know what i mean and yeah. and 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 uh i had a pastor come in and start talking to me and he was just amazing and he said do you want to pray and i was like yeah i do and it felt so good and then he, he kind of rejuvenated me and and since that day i've you know i i'm i'm in i i and, and you know i want to go back to, it's not fair to the people that have done good work for me when i say that about labels i just I'm a little bitter uh eonian records doing a great job with freak show and they and are rat pack, they are. Rat, rat yeah. pack records rat pack records did do a great job with with uh metal church so i i, I shouldn't it's not right for me to like just put them under the umbrella and go fuck yourself but right. overall i you yeah. know i seriously thought about starting my own label early in the year and it's i'm not even sure that it's a, that it's off the table you know what i mean just because right there's got to be a way to make it more profitable that's what i do i, I make business I more profitable that's that's what i do that's how i'm alive right now that's right. i think yes mediocre businesses and straighten out what's wrong with them and make them profitable and move on and keep a piece yeah. of everything. Let's start with you, Stet, this time. What do you think about Frankie Benali? Oh, well, I love, uh, Frankie was, um, he was, he was my friend. I, I know that he was, uh, uh, what do you call it? A Kurt businessman sometimes, you know what I mean? He sometimes, but I, what I think about him, I think he was an amazing drummer. I think he, uh, I've st I've still been trying to come up with a drum intro that's as brilliant, brilliant as do da, do da. You know, it's like, hey, I know what song that is. I've been trying my, to come up with something. Uh, Frankie's a great drummer. He was always my friend. We shared duties on s several records. We shared drums. Me and him would a we shared drum duties in uh, 1990. We did the Uriah Heap reunion at NAMM, and me and Frankie were drummers side by side. Michael uh -huh. Anthony from from uh, Van Halen was a bass player, and Ken Hensley was my roommate at the time. So yeah, me and Frankie have had a lot of good times, and um, and you know I, I I'm so sad that he's gone, you know, uh, but it's cool that to say that the the, you know, the legend Frank Minnelli was my friend. We you know we got along good, uh -huh. and um, God rest his soul. It's it, it, it's kind of weird to think that he's not with us anymore, you know. Uh -huh. um, how about you, Ronnie? Um, yeah, um, he's. He's a, he was a, he was a good drummer and you know he he came in and played on the first freak show album with uh Jeff Labar and I uh you know and in that album is you know it's, it's a, it came out really good and brought me to a, a different level uh as far as respect in the industry and and he helped me do that 
um he also is you know like i said he's a he's a ruthless business guy and uh you know i we just we had some really terrible moments where uh uh, but you know instead of bringing all that up it just you know it didn't work out great in the long run for jeff and i uh but uh overall you know frankie benelli is you know total icon in the industry and and uh um you know um i am grateful to have done the record i did with him how about you carlos uh, well, I have to say I do love the guy. He's a talented drummer, but he unfortunately had a dark side. He was really hard to get along with. Right. And uh, basically like an adult bully. Mm-hmm. He'd bully people all the time. I'd see it. He'd act, one of those kind of guys that would act out. Right. In public. And, you know, but he had a good side to him. He did. But unfortunately, towards the end, more of the dark side came out. Right. But, yeah. Uh, you know, he was a talented guy. What can I say? Oh, cool. Ronnie, when, I, when you go I, out I, on I tour, I would do business with the guy if he was a, alive. I would never do business with him again. But right, or yeah, that band. same here. Wow. <laughs> when you guys go out on tour, will you come to the East Coast? We're hoping to go everywhere. You know, <laughs> as many places yeah. as we can go. All the big cities. I'm saying, right, Stat? Yeah. We're like we're like vampires. We're going to be invited. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but absolutely, Brian. Yeah, no, kidding aside, of course. Uh, you know, I, I, if I was to guess, I'd say for comfort and ease of, of everyone, we would we would do our first shows on the West Coast, you know, to get everybody acclimated a little bit. Right. Um, but, yeah, of course, the East Coast is a, such a strong market. We would, we would be uh, foolish not to embrace it, you know. Um, Stet, you have any um, qualms about coming up with the presidential election? No, I'm not. Man, you know, I'm not uh, – don't get Ronnie going. Don't get Ronnie going. <laughs> I'm, I, I got to tell you, man, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not overly political and I'm not, here's what I say about it. If, if whatever they say about uh, President Biden, if that guy walked into my bar, I'd sit down next to him, be cordial and, get, and buy him a drink and talk to him. Whatever they say about Trump, if he walked in my bar, I'd sit, sit next to him, buy him a drink and talk to him. It's like, who, that's how I am. I'm not, I, I don't know exactly what the hell they do to hate either, any of them right. um I, i'm not i'm not love i mean it's things don't seem great right now right. you know but you know and you know i know everybody did not like trump but they seemed good then except as you know everybody complained about racism and stuff it's like i'm kind of on the sidelines wondering right. what's going to happen is are those the guys or is, or is rfk jr going to jump in i mean i don't i don't know who's gonna who do we who do uh, we even he vote for? ship today oh he did you know VP and he he sunk his ship. It's over. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know, and you know, I, 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 but I'm not hateful about it. I'm just like, you know, I, I think it's the, the our current guy needs. He's, you know, I think he's older, and I, I watched a serious decline in, in, in him as a, as a person in like four years. I just he's slowed way down, and he seems like a little lost and stuff. It's like, you know, what else you got? You know what I mean? I'm not saying I, I hate the guy. It's like, what else you got? Anything else? You got anything else? Ronnie, do you uh, foresee maybe I'm I'm skipping the, the the presidential question with you, you know? Good, that told me. Okay. Hey, thanks, man. Do you All foresee right. uh, another Miss Crazy album coming out? I sure don't, because I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> There's no room for that. Uh-huh. No, uh, no, not at all. I did no. ten albums with that band. I'm, oh. I I I I I, I close the door. With that, but it was fun. It was a great run, you know. Right. And it and it brought me to this, you know. Right. Brought me to do the Freak Show record. It, it got guys, you know, like Jeff Labar and Tony Franklin in my life, and uh-huh. Frankie, and you know, it got me to here. Even though I did some stuff before then, you uh-huh. know, like right. like Stet knew me when I was in Amsterdam and stuff, touring with Rat. Uh-huh. That was great. But you know, we all do the stuff we do. But uh, that, yeah, that door's closed. Well, I thank you guys for uh, this little chat today and uh, make sure you pick up the new album on the Onia Records. Uh, Carlos, would you like to say anything in conclusion? I want to thank all the fans that would support us. You know, check out the record. It's really good. Everybody plays their ass off on it. The songs are great. 
And uh, I want to thank all the fans that have supported all of us through the years. And uh, thank you, Brian, for having us on your show. No problem. Thank you. Ronnie? Yeah, you know, same thing, man. Just such an honor to play with these guys. And uh, I really look forward to playing live and meeting people and, and just, you know, bringing the show to the, to the, to the fans. Cool, cool, cool. Steph? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm of the same thinking. I, I got to say that it's um, I, I'm loving this. This this band is just so uh, peaceful, and 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 we have such great support. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody um, for uh, the ongoing support. You know, I've been quite lucky lately. I had a nice time with Metal Church last year, and this thing here is is going great. You know, and I've done a couple of decent records this, that will be coming out later in the year. But this this is the next up. Uh, the, the the freak shows. Uh, the next thing we're going to do. And we, we thank you so much for the love and support. And we'll try and get out there and rock with you as soon as possible. Cool, cool. I got a couple minutes left. So I want to ask right. that. How was your time in Carnival of Souls? Awesome. Uh -huh. It was amazing. Those guys are just absolutely Gene Hunter is just so, such a, such a gifted dude. And uh, you know, they're, they're all great guys and machine and, and Lee, the singer. I mean, it was as great. And D. I I mean, just beautiful people. I thought the band was was great, great songs, you know. Uh -huh. um, you know, everybody has good times and bad times, and we have more good times than, than bad times, you know. Okay. And uh, very talented people. Nice. Hey, Brian. Hey, everybody. hey, Brian. Yeah. Since we got a couple seconds, I, I wanted to ask Carlos a question. Go ahead. Hey, Carlos, when you were playing in rap, what was that like in that duration playing with Warren D. Martini? I loved it. I thought we got along great. And he, he was probably one of my best friend in the band. And I knew all the guys, obviously, but I loved it. I liked playing with those guys. I probably had more fun playing with a rat than Quiet Riot, to be honest with you. <laughs> those guys were way more easygoing and not so uptight, you know? Yeah. When I toured with Rat uh, in 2001 on the 9 11 tour, that's what we called it, uh, Warren was my best friend, too. And I yeah. could see how, how that could totally work out. He's, he's totally rad. He is, yeah. Okay, guys, I thank you very much. I appreciate the chat. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. You got it, Brian. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Bye-bye. You guys be cool, everybody. Take care, uh, guys. <laughs> so, hey, dude, so we're on uh, for noon.